Hello, my name is Sean Brazil. Welcome to the website demo portion of the rural water training. Uh, in this video and the outline in your packet, we'll cover many parts of the water rights website. And you can see the main page here at waterrights.utah.gov. I've set it to full screen so you can't see the address bar at top, but if it becomes necessary, I'll jump out of that so you can read the address of the page that we're on. Uh, there's a lot of information on here. We're only going to be scratching the surface of the total amount available. When you've got time, I encourage you to just explore around the site. Uh, we've got a lot of tools on here, uh, maps, and a lot of information buried away. And it takes a lot of time to get familiar with. As you can see below the banner here, we've got a menu bar, and each of these menu items on the top bar have submenus, and some of those submenus lead to others. And there's five of them, and then a staff menu. We're going to take a look at three of them quickly here first in just a minute before we jump into the programs menu where a lot of the, uh, the website's tools are located. But on the main page here, uh, you can see on the left hand side, we've got some frequently asked questions. If you click on the FAQs link here, this is a listing of all of them. There's some information there for people who are completely unfamiliar with water rights. And then below that, we have our current issues. These are notices about public meetings that are coming up, in, such as job openings and other information. Usually it's public meetings, but there are others. And again, if you click on this link right at the top of the box, you can see all of the previous current issues. In the center of the page, we have quick links to each of the six sections in the Division of Water Rights. Uh, we've got water rights, distribution and regulation, well drilling, dam safety, stream alteration, and adjudication all fall under the umbrella of the Water Rights Division. In the center of the page is usually the most recent important announcement that we've had on the site. In this case, it was the announcement of a groundwater management plan for Parowan Valley, including a link to information about that meeting that was held. In the top right corner is a quick link to the water rights search. You can search for a water right number or other application numbers, and we'll come back and talk a lot more about that in a minute. And below that are some quick links to our applications and forums, some brochures, our training videos, including these rural water videos on our YouTube website quick link to our map search tool. And then in the lower right corner, we have an interactive map, our water right policies pages, where you can take a look at each water right area in the state and click on one of the areas to read more information about that water right area. So in this case, we're taking a look at the Central Severe River water right area. It tells a little bit about the management history, the sources. If there's a groundwater management plan in effect, it will describe the groundwater management plan and link to the official documents about it. And the general section discusses usually what newspapers water rights get advertised in in that area, along with some other information about consumptive use, and it will describe the regional office or tell you the regional office that, that water or that, that water right area falls in. So we'll go back a couple of steps here. The first menu we ought to take a look at is the contacts menu. You can either click on the main bar up here or you can jump down to one of these sub menus. But if we click on the uh, contact information, this is a listing including the email addresses, phone numbers, and mailing addresses of the assistant state engineers and state engineer, and also our regional offices around the state. A person with a water rights question is usually best directed to contact the regional office in the area they reside in, and if that regional office can't answer, they can usually guide you further. 
to who you would need to contact. And also, we have contact information for our enforcement engineer, our stream alteration, well drilling, and water use programs here as well. There's also a listing of our staff. Regional office map will take you to this page for this document, this PDF, showing at a, at a glance where the regional offices are located and color-coded the parts of the state they serve. And if we look next under the Law and Agreements tab, uh, we've got the Water Rights Statutes link which goes to the official state code regarding water rights and all its aspects here. If you click on one of these links, you probably can't read it in the bottom corner, but it will take you to the uh, utah.gov official code site. where You can read the text of the, the law. And with, also we have some administrative rules and compacts and agreements. And we have some groundwater management plans. And these are very important as we uh, continue to use water in the state. Currently working on a groundwater management plan for Parowan Valley. So if you're interested in that area, you can click here and you can get a link to all the past meetings that we've held, including one as recently as January of this year, 2022. And you can get more information as we develop this groundwater management plan. Most of these meetings, these past meetings, will have uh, recordings of the video, or at least the audio if we recorded it. And any PowerPoint presentations will have the slides downloadable as well. So uh, one other one, as long as we're talking about meetings, let's take a look at the meetings link. And we have our scheduled meetings. We have one coming up on March 15th, 2022. You'll get some information about where it's being held, the agenda, and any documentation of interest relevant to it. We'll have a printable agenda for our meetings every time we hold one and other materials will be listed here. And there's a link on this plan meetings page to all of our past meetings. We've got quite a, quite a number of years of meetings history saved here. You can scroll all the way back. But for all our past meetings, you can click on a link and again, see the information that was available for that meeting. Any past meeting documents and if there is one, a video replay on our YouTube channel. Also under meetings, our distribution section holds a bunch of meetings in the early part of the year. You can reach those on this link, including one for each distribution system. And that includes all the documents for that distribution system. And also we have some information there about how to connect to the, one of the meetings if you would like to attend one virtually. Under our hearing recordings, we hold water right hearings. Sometimes when there's been a protest, we'll hold hearings and we record those hearings and they will be available here under the hearings recording link. These go back four decades now or more, I think back to the mid 1970s. This is a good resource if you are researching any protests that have occurred on a given water right and would like to hear what occurred at the hearing. And the hearing schedule is also available for upcoming hearings. In this case, the next one is March 16th. And on that hearing schedule, you'll see the water right number and a list of the applicants and any protestants. And that one has been canceled. And 
little further down, we have some older meetings from the Water Task Force and some other links to other meetings that are water rights related. All right, let's take a look at the main menu item here on the Water Rights website, Programs Menu. There's a lot of information tucked away under here. We're going to be here for a while. Uh, there's a menu item for each section of the office. And you can see many of these have flyout menus on the side. So if you know exactly the topic you're after, you can click on one of these on the side. But if you click one of the main menu items, you'll be taken to a page like this for water rights, for example. Uh, we've got some water right information here, uh, some history of water rights in Utah and how the office came to be. And the first thing we're going to look at on this page in the blue menu on the left, the forms. And if you remember from the main page, you can also get to the forms over here on this resources tab on the right hand side. This link will take you to the same place. I'm going to go water rights, forms. And here's a listing of all the forms we use in the division. Uh, we have a mix of static PDF documents that you can fill in and print out. We have some online web applications, and you can tell from this key which are which. And we have information for many of them and links to any related code, law code that goes with them. A typical PDF application looks something like this. Many of them can be filled out online and printed to be mailed in. You can just type here in the PDF and then send it in. Uh, an example of an online application would be our address change application. And in many cases, these allow you to type in a water right number or an application number and it will pull information and automatically fill it in in the database. So in this case, it's important, the address changes especially, to keep this up to date because addresses, current mailing addresses, are often our only point of contact for the owner of record. And it's important to note also that the address change application can only change the address. It cannot change the owner name, on a water right or any other information that would have to be done through a different process. But nevertheless, the owner, the address information is very important. So you would type in a water right number or an exchange number in this case, click get current owners, and then you could select the owner and a form would come up where you can submit an address change request. Or you can still do it be a static address request change form. Another important online application we've got here is our application map wizard, which is useful when to put along with your application that meets the mapping standards we require when submitting an application. And there are several steps to filling this out. Uh, here's, in the case of a new application, how the process would work. Click on New Application, and you'd zoom in somewhere in the state where you're intending to either drill your well or divert from a source. Let's, uh, we're going to click the map and add a point. We would intend to drill our well. We'll put it right there. And you'll notice down here on the bottom, it's automatically filled in the PLSS description of that coordinate. And there's also the UTM coordinates underneath. And we'll, that'll be our only well. Next, we can add a place of use area. We can either select it by a 40 acre tract. Uh, we could import from an existing water right number, we could use a parcel ID number, but in this case, we're going to simply draw a polygon. And it will allow you to click on the map. You intend to use the water. It'll tell you that we've drawn 2.2 acres. And if you need to edit it, you can double click on it. You can adjust the polygon this way, wherever you need. 
and it will also update that text on the side. Stop editing. On the next step down, you can add any other layers you think are important to include on your map. You can turn on the ownership parcels. We could turn on uh, show more layers. You have all kinds of layers you could turn on. If this is a blurry image and in this area it's kind of a, a low resolution image, you have different base map options. Some may be newer and clearer, like this is a much better background image in this portion of the state. And we'll talk about these map search layers in more detail here in a little bit. But for now, if we needed to add any annotations, we can do it with these tools right here. We could add some text, for example, that says house and move it around if we need to. And then lastly, final option to do is we can set what information we want to show in addition to the map itself. If you're making black and white copies, this is often a good idea to dim the photo in the background so that the polygons are sharper in the text. And then finally, when you're ready done, ready to print it out, you click on print. You would have a pop-up that will show up and you can export it out as a PDF document or print it on your printer. So a very handy tool for submitting a mapping standards complete map. So that just about covers the forms section. Like I say, we've got all kinds of forms here for each section of the office. And next we'll be taking a look at the search menu. All right, so let's talk about how you would search for information on our website about a given right or map out where some water rights are located. Two main ways to get to our search tools. You can either use this gray button on the main page here, the search button. That will take you to our main search page. And you can also get to that page under water rights and search. Both of them will get you to the same place. We've got a number of different ways that you can search, as you can see here on this blue menu on the left. I'm just going to go from top to bottom and go through how these tools work. You can search by water right number, which is about as you'd expect. You can type in a water right number or an application number. The way they're formatted is described down here below. And we enter that, hit search, and this will bring up the water right details page for that given right. And we'll be going over this screen in uh, a lot more detail here in a little while. Now, this is just about how the search tools work. So let's close this. And you can do that with any type of application number. So change application would begin with little a. It takes you to the same kind of screen, only this time about the change application. Uh, next, we have searching by name or a source. And in this case, we are going to be searching uh, by an owner name. Let's do a search for water rights owned by John Smith. This will give you a listing. And since there are a lot of John Smiths in the state, you need to pay attention to the water right prefix to know which area you're looking at. And you can also search on a source of supply. So if you were looking for, say, all the water rights that have a source of supply along the Sand Pitch River, you can get a display like that, all those rights. So it's important to note, too, that you might need to try some alternate spellings, because sometimes in the database, a name like Sand Pitch might be separated into two words. So you get a different set of results here. So if you know something is in there and you can't find it, try an alternate spelling. 
Uh, if you do happen to know a water right group number, you can look up which water rights are in that group. Which is cool. And we have a point of diversion search, which will let you search for any water rights that fall in a given section, township, and range, or within a radius of a certain area. And you can just do these drop downs to get that. Let's do a radius search example. We want to find all the water rights that are within 1,000 feet of a point located 1,000 feet north, 1,000 feet east, of 1 south, 1 east, section 10. Nine. Let's see if we find any. And we can look at the results either on a map or in a table. Let's take a look at the map view. We'll zoom into our circle. It looks like I just missed getting any in our results. This is up by the University of Utah, it looks like. Let's expand that to 2,000 feet. There you can see the water rights that fall within that area. And you can also get the same results in a table. So that's one way of searching by location. Another way to search by location is a place of use search. And in this case, you can search down to the 40 acre tract area of anywhere we have a polygon in our database that, that falls in those areas. So let's just leave these default and get the place of use. Here's everything within section one of one north and one west. Got these water rights fall within that section. These X's indicate whether which 40 acre tract within that section they belong to. Sometimes they're in all of them, sometimes they're in just a couple. Right, so the map search is probably our, one of our most powerful ways of searching. We're just browsing around. If you click on that, it will bring up our map interface, online map interface. On the right hand side, you can see a list of layers that are available by default. If there are some not shown that you want to look at, you can click on Show More Layers, and there are even more here. Now, if you zoom in, we have our roads and counties and labels and our points of diversion layer turned on. But until you zoom in quite a ways, because there are so many points of diversion, you won't see any until you zoom in quite a ways. And then they will begin to populate as you get closer. So here are our points of diversion. And in areas where there's a lot of points of diversion in one location, you'll see these numbers in circles. And that indicates that there are three points of diversion right close together there. And if you click on that you'll see a pop-up that shows the three water rights area. Or if you click on one, it will give you a quick pop-up with information about that particular right. And you can click on the link in the box that, that will take you to the details page for that right. Again, there are other there's other information you can turn on here besides the points of diversion. You can turn on the public land survey layer showing the section, township, and ranges. You could turn on our water rights area layer or our adjudication book boundaries layer. And if you want to see what a given area looked like in the past, we have different base maps that you can view. This is the most recent imagery up at the top of this list, base maps. 
Well, this is the most recent Google imagery. But we have some dating all the way back to the 90s. It gives you an idea of just how much has changed when you see how much farmland there was there by Spanish Fork compared to now. And then we have the ability to search for a given water right number. So we looked at 73335 earlier on the details screen. So if we search for that water right, it's going to zoom us to that location where that water right resides. And in this case, we got some green polygons as well, and that's the place of use for that right. In this case, the 40-acre tracts that the place of use falls in. And if we expand this result here, you can see the use groups that 73355 resides in and any changes that it's undergone. And if you click on one of these change numbers, you can see it takes it a minute to load it. But in yellow, you have the heretofore information. And in purple, the hereafter information. So you can see where the place of use used to be heretofore, and in purple, where it will be used after the change is approved, certificated. So another thing you can do from this layers menu is these guys. We turn on our points of diversion. You can also filter these records. So we've got a bunch of water rights on there. Let's say you were only interested in, we apply a filter here. You can see a legend of the different types of rights. If we want to apply a filter, let's say we are only interested in the approved and perfected surface rights. So as we check these boxes, the map will update on the fly, leave us only with the rights we're interested in seeing in our filter here. Let's say we wanted to narrow that down further to only being interested in irrigation rights. Turn off all these others. And there shows only the surface irrigation rights. And we can get a listing of those as well. So on the last tab over here, we have some tools. We have a location lookup. You can click somewhere on the map, and it will tell you the latitude, longitude, and some other information. County, the water right area, the regional office this falls in. You can do some quick measurements. If you're interested in how large this field is right here, you can A polygon on top and will tell you the size and acres. Same with doing distances. Tell you how many feet. And you can use other coordinates or other type, excuse me, other types of units. Uh, you can add annotations like you could with the uh, application map wizard. If you want to type in a name or add your own points. Finally, you can print it out see get a quick preview of what the map would look like if you added some signature lines if you wanted to submit it as an application map or you can edit this say whatever you would like and click print and you'd have the chance to make a pdf out of it or print it on your printer So, uh, next down the list from the map search, we have some lists. Uh, these are just quick lists of new filings, new approvals, etc. They're just in simple format like this in each case. We have all kinds of lists here, uh, such as water companies and entities. We'll talk about that here in a second. We come down to water companies and entities. 
you can search either by county, if you know part of the name of a water right company, you can enter it in there if you need. see any companies with the name Alpine. You can get results like that, and then you can see information about the company here. contact information for some of these companies may not be current or accurate. Uh, as you can see from, in this case, from our old system in 2002. Uh, if we get new information, we enter it, but otherwise take it with a grain of salt. Whether some of them that old might still be around. Uh, if we go back, uh, we have our water use reporting system. This lists all the companies that the division is tracking water use data for and collecting data for, uh, lists its reporting status if it's inactive, uh, what type of system it is, and the county it's located in. Again, you can click on any of these names and read more about the, uh, about the companies. We have a change application tracker. Now this shows the status of all the changes that the division is currently working on. We've had 858 filed since last September. Give you an idea of the volume. Give you some information like percent completed estimate and comments left by our staff. And down the list, we have ROC process status. That's our title reports of conveyance. Here they are in the pipeline. Again, we've had quite a few just in the last last couple of weeks. Uh, livestock certificates, won't go into much detail here, just again a listing of livestock and click on it to see more information. And finally our mail log, and this will retrieve all logged correspondence uh, that has come in for a given water right or any of these other topics. Uh, if we wanted to see what mail has been logged for our right that we've been looking at here and there, submit that. And here's a list of the mail that has been logged that relates to that water right. This goes back to about 2002, I believe. All right, so notices and advertisements can be found under programs, water rights, and notices. We have a couple of options here. You can look at the advertising list, which will show you all applications in the current advertising cycle. We have information about the date it was filed, the date the advertising began, and the date the protest period ends, and whether or not an application has been protested or not. This is quite a large list. Now, when you're viewing the entire state, you can narrow it down to a particular county that that helps narrow things down quite a lot. And you can export this list out as a PDF or in a spreadsheet. Go back. The other option here is we have an email service where you can create an account just by clicking this button and signing up with an email and setting a password. And then you are able to get notifications emailed to you Anytime there's any change in the water rights file jacket, whether there's any new mail logged, new documentation added into that folder that's been scanned and uploaded. And, uh, to do that, once you're logged in, you can simply track a folder by its water right number. If I wanted to track that water right we've looked at a couple of times, 73-335, click Add. Now, anytime any changes are made to that water rights scan document folder or anything that's mail logged to it, I would be notified that that has occurred. The other thing you can do is a point of diversion notification, and that will let you enter in a geographic location and get an email notification anytime a water right is a point of diversion is filed within the area you specify. So let's add a new location. There's several ways you can do this. Uh, it'll pop up a window with a map here. You can zoom in to the location you're interested in. If I was interested, say, in any new filings around my former 
home in Mount Pleasant. Click on the map. Say I was interested in anything within a mile around. And add that. Now any time a water ride is filed that has a point of diversion or a place of use that falls within that radius, I would get an email notification. You can do that also by importing water right points of diversion and doing the same kind of buffer as I did with the one I clicked on. You could do an entire water right area or an entire county even. Hydrologic unit code, Huck, is a, uh, a drainage basin, essentially. So you could click on a Huck and get notifications of any filings that fall within that hydrologic drainage basin. Or you can draw a custom area if you were interested, say, in any filings here around, uh, let's zoom into Levan here. You can draw a polygon anywhere you would like, and you'd get notified of anything falling within that polygon. And you have to be careful if you uh, add a lot of polygons, or especially if you choose to track an entire county, because you could end up getting an awful lot of email, depending on if it's an active filing area or not. And uh, if you no longer wish to track any of these, you just click on the delete link, and they will be taken off. So that is notifications and email, or uh, advertising lists. Okay, so rules and procedures uh, found under water right, or programs, water rights, rules and procedures. Uh, it takes you to some links to uh, appropriation policy, compacts, distribution plans, groundwater management. Under appropriation policy, we've got a couple of things here. Uh, we have a duty map for the state, which you can see either as a printable map or interactive using the map tool we've seen before. These are the various duty values around the state, which we use for in diversion and depletion calculations. We have policies by area. That's another way to get to the uh, water rights area map. We showed in the lower right corner of the main page. You can click on a water right area for more information about it. Uh, policies by topic. You can read at your leisure. We won't go much into it right here. You might recognize this diagram. The application process, however. Uh, we have U another link to Utah Code. And under here, we also have our use calculator. And this is a handy tool if you're trying to calculate the amount of diversion and depletion is necessary for a given filing that you're planning on doing. There are instructions for how to use the calculator at the bottom. Uh, a lot of this information is pre-filled up on top, and uh, unless you know what you're doing, uh, you should be cautious about editing any of that information. But let's say you know your irrigation duty is not four, but three, your location. You can change that. Then you can enter quantities down below you're interested in a one acre, one acre of irrigation, one family, say. And we have a stock calculator. You can enter in a number of animals of a given type. It will calculate an equivalent livestock unit total for you. And it will tell you the diversion and depletion amounts and the minimum CFS you need cover that amount of use. Again, there are instructions here that you can read for how to use the calculator. And then there's also a flow calculator, so you can convert from calculator flow units to another. And under this Page as well, we have compacts and agreements that the state has entered into with other entities, such as the uh, Native American tribes, including the most recent one, the, uh, the Navajo Water Rights Settlement. You can get more information about that, and also the water rights of our national parks. 